It's a question as old as time itself. Tower cooler? A liquid cooling. Tower cooler? A liquid cooling. Well, as far as Threadripper goes, let's definitively find out. I say definitively, but this is gonna be the basis of Flame Wars for years to come. The new Threadrippers are out, and no matter how you look at it, these machines are monsters. They are head and shoulders above anything else. Forget i9, forget Xeon. These are in a class by themselves. 24 cores and 32 cores from AMD, up to four gigahertz on, on all cores is what I'm seeing in some workloads. Uh, maximum boost to 4.5 gigahertz, 32 cores and a single socket. Yes, they use a fair bit of power. They're designed to use up to 280 watt. I've observed uh, 286, almost 290 watts. As reported by the system, 425 watts from the wall. So that's generating 425 watts of heat, in other words. So none of that actually goes into work. It's going to increase the, uh, the thermals in your room. There's, there's not, there's, it's physics. Yeah, that's started another flame more, but it's true. So if you get a tower cooler, the cold plate here and seven heat pipes, uh, they've got a fluid in them that evaporates and carries the heat away. This is the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. This is one of my favorite tower coolers for Threadripper. It does have a RAM clearance issue with some RAM, like the, uh, the Corsair Dominator memory. It had a little bit of a problem with this cooler. This cooler didn't, didn't quite clear it on the, uh, the Aorus Extreme motherboard that we're using in this system. I switched out to the G-Skill Trident Z Neo. That worked okay, although it is 32 gigabytes instead of 64 gigabytes. I've run through the Ferronix test suite with a number of benchmarks. First, with the Be Quiet Tower Cooler. And then again, this EK Custom Loop. Now this EK Custom Loop is the performance uh, series. It's a, sort of a kit, you, you just order it from, from Newegg or uh, EK's website or whatever. You get a 360 millimeter radiator, all the fittings, some flexible tubing, three Vardar fans. You get a CPU block, not a threader for CPU block. You're gonna have to order that somewhere else and that's gonna be like another $100. You've got, uh, it does come with a, with a block for like more normal pedestrian CPUs. And you probably could adapt that block to use Threadripper, but I want full coverage. If we're gonna do this, if we're gonna figure this out, if we're gonna settle it once and for all, I'm gonna need the best possible custom loop situation. So forget all in ones. Now I'm preparing for this video. There's uh, Intermax. Intermax makes me very sad. They've designed an incredible all in one cooler for Threadripper. It's extremely well designed. It's extremely well put together. They used crappy coolant. I've got four, all of which I actually paid for. I paid money for them over the last couple of years because I've been a, a fan of Threadripper for a long time. I mean, it brought 16 cores, to a relatively enthusiast platform, 1950. I've still got some 1950 systems floating around here the, at the office. And uh, the Intermax coolers, when you first get them, they're incredible. But all of mine have had contaminants or corrosion problems, but I've learned how to refluid my Intermaxes, and I'm doing a separate video on that. So if you were replace the uh, the coolant with uh, some anti-corrosion growth inhibitor coolant, basically it works out. But this is a custom loop, so this is even higher end than that. This is gonna have better performance than a 360 millimeter uh, Intermax cooler. Because the question that we're trying to answer here is, this is like, you know, $100, $150 US. It's gonna vary a little bit depending on where you are in the world. It's a little bulky versus this, which is gonna be four to five hundred dollars US. What's the performance difference? If you're just concerned about performance, how fast is your machine gonna run? How much faster is this than this? Well, let me interrupt you for a second there, past Wendell. We've got a late entrant. This is the Arctic Freezer 50TR. Also bought this one. So let's just turn this into an all out shootout. Let's throw in a Noctua the 14S dual fan configuration, why not? So we've got the Be Quiet and TR4, the Arctic Freezer 50TR, we've got the Noctua 14S, and we've got the EK Custom Loop with the Ferronix test suite. Now, testing a cooler is uh, like watching paint dry. 
It's like one of the most tedious things that you could possibly do. And at the end of the day, with the Pharonix test suite, if we look at things like the blender graph, there's really not a lot of difference between these coolers in terms of performance. You shave off like the best case scenario from uh, an almost 300 second render is about eight seconds. And that's with all the same settings, all the same defaults, all the same everything. The biggest problem that you'll have with these big tower coolers is RAM clearance. The Noctua cooler did a little worse than the Ar Arctic cooler and the Be Quiet cooler, but that's because there's physically less metal there, I think. And I did use a dual fan configuration with the with the Noctua. I wasn't using the new, the fancy new Noctua fans, I was using the old school Noctua fans. So at the end of the day, the Arctic uh, Freezer 50TR is a little better than the Be Quiet TR4. But the reason for that is because the fans are louder, I think, and move a little bit more air or there's more surface area or a combination of the two. To my ear, it's definitely louder. Using the, uh, you know, the camera equipment and stuff like that here, it's a few dB louder, but measured from two feet away, like the computer's gonna be in the floor, it's, there's barely an audible difference. The 360 millimeter radiator was the coolest, but with the Vardar fans, you can run those really high. You can dump a lot of watts into it with the custom loop cooler. The custom loop cooler was definitely better with overclocking, but I'm not gonna get into overclocking in this video. You can dump upwards of like 600 watts into those Threadripper coolers. But the thing that's the big difference between the custom loop cooler and the tower cooler is that when you're running benchmarks, you're gonna run the benchmarks for hours, at least a couple of hours, because it takes that that long for the uh, custom loop cooler to reach a, a hysteresis. One way that you can sort of cheat and figure out if you're losing performance is to use the kilowatt and monitor your wattage. If you have less wattage that is going into the system, then you know that your performance is not as good as it could be because the heat is staying with the system. The system is not dissipating the heat. The more heat the system can dissipate, the more energy it's going to consume. So 425 watts, remember, is what our baseline is. Duh, it's the wide board again. Okay, tower cooler versus custom loop. What's going on with the temperatures? How is all this related? So if you've got a tower cooler, you know, we have 22C, that's our ambient temperature, 39, it's about 100 degrees, 75 and 85C, because weird stuff starts to happen with Threadripper in terms of 75 and 85 degrees C. If you've got a tower cooler, you know, you're cruising around here and we start to run our benchmark. Very quickly, it's gonna get up to 75 or 85 degrees C. I don't know why, but we're complete, like all I have, I've got like five red markers, I don't know why. So we've got, uh, you know, a tower cooler very quickly gets up to temperature. And this is sort of where 75 and 85 is sort of where the fit stuff happens in AMD processors, because it's gonna, boost until it hits that and so it's kind of designed with that in mind now if you've got a custom loop cooler you'll see better temperatures but it's not going to really draw any more power so there's no better performance but after you've been running blender or something for hours eventually it'll work its way up there or if you've got tons of cooling you know it may never actually get there you may actually stay down here and you'll see better boost temperatures because of it but the cheating that I was talking about was with like the kilowatt. So if your case is not dissipating heat like it should, you'll see, you know, your temperature usually will spike up pretty high and it will stay at 85C. But if you look at the kilowatt or you use Hardware Info 64 to look at how much power your CPU is drawing, you'll see that it actually goes down. And that's because the CPU is so hot that the rest of your system is not carrying the heat away. The CPU is not gonna use as much power because that much heat can't be carried away. It's entered a steady state, in other words. And this is the thing to look for, because if you have this, then you'll have a performance delta. But if you don't have this, whether it's a tower cooler or a custom loop, it's gonna be basically the same performance. Now, I kinda, I don't want the video to be boring, but I'm thinking about doing a thing where like, I publish numbers in the article on the website, but then I'll also do a video and talk about the conclusions. Because the conclusion of this video is that you should always spend more money on faster RAM, at least with Threadripper. <laughs> faster RAM makes a much, much larger difference than anything else. And in fact, while I was testing this, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna upload all these results and it's gonna be great. Then there was a BIOS update that came out and the BIOS update changed the results on some of the tests. 
because it was just it's within a few percentage points so it's kind of a wash you can pretty much go with with anything you want at least as far as the be quiet tr4 or noctua or arctic the noctua has a little bit better ram clearance a little bit worse heat dissipation especially when we're talking about the 32 core thread ripper the ek has the best heat dissipation and is potentially the quietest and there's no ram clearance issues there obviously so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna publish this video, but I feel like I completely wasted my time. So I'm sorry, but I wanted to share it with you anyway because reasons. I'm Wendell. This is level one. I really like this cooler. It's a very good cooler. It's shockingly good because it can go even beyond what the other tower coolers can do for whatever reason, but still not quite as good as a custom loop. And you know my modded I've got those EK or the modded uh, Intermax coolers with the custom fluid, but. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and I'll see you later.